I'm Ayla Tesler Mave, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the iconic Beatles acoustic song, You've Got to Hide Your Love Away, released on the album Help in 1965. If she's gone, I can't go on. Sung and written by John Lennon, but credited, of course, to Lennon McCartney. The song was allegedly influenced by Bob Dylan's writing and performance style, and I think you can really hear that in the song. And before we dive in, if you want to learn the full song, we have it transcribed in Guitario using our interactive practice tool that allows you to slow it down, loop difficult sections, and practice along to music. And you can head on over to guitario.com slash trial if you want to give it a try. All right, let's take a closer look. Firstly, before we even talk about the chords, let's talk about the strumming pattern. While this pattern isn't used for every single part of the song, it's used for almost all of it, and it's very helpful to keep this groove running in your head throughout to help all of the parts feel fluid and connected. So the main strumming pattern that goes on throughout the song is basically down, down, up, down. Down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down. And the first down strum focuses mostly on the root note of whatever chord you're playing, and the subsequent down, up, down will focus more on the upper part of the chord. For example, let's say I'm playing a G major chord. I'd start by focusing on the root, and then down, up, down, focusing on the upper strings. And that's, you know, the main thing going on throughout the song, but you may occasionally hear down, down, up, down, up, where there's an extra strum in there. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down. And it's super subtle when it happens, but if you really, really want to get, you know, as close as possible to the original, you'd sort of be able to alternate between down, down, up, down, and down, down, up, down, up. And you know, when John Lennon was playing this, I doubt he was thinking that hard about where exactly he was doing which one. He was mostly just feeling it out, I'm sure. Um, so see if you can internalize both of those patterns and just follow what feels right in the moment and what your hands just naturally do. Um, but yeah, another way to feel the song is to think one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, you know, like a waltz feel. Uh, and again, it just helps to really break down the groove like that, maybe have that running through your head throughout the song as you're playing, because like I said, it can make everything feel more connected and fluid. So let's talk about what you would be playing in the intro of the song. Sounds like this. And what's happening here is you're playing a four finger G major chord. That's your middle finger on the third fret of the low E string, index finger on the second fret of the A string, ring finger on the third fret of the B string, and your pinky on the third fret of the high E string. And so first you could start by playing just two times. Down, down, up, down, 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 up, down. Um, but if you listen closely to the song, you'd hear this little detail. What's happening there is I'm doing a hammer on to the second fret of the D string using that index finger and then taking it off so then that D string is open. And once you've done that, we can move on to the verse. So we can split the verse into two sections that are essentially identical, but end in a slightly different way. So we're gonna start the verse on a G major shape, the one that I just showed you. Just playing down, down, up, down, and then moving to this shape, which is kind of like a D major, though a little bit more colorful, this is called a D sus4, but you also don't need to know that to play it. <laughs> Basically what I'm doing is, you know, removing that middle finger and moving my index down to the second fret of the G string. And because it's a D sus4, that root note would be D when you're, you know, focusing on the first part of that strumming pattern. <laughs> 
So something you might notice if you watch the scene from the movie Help where the band is playing this song, you would notice that John is keeping the pinky on the third fret of the high E string for almost every single chord. It's used as a pivot point. Again, you might notice going between that G and that D sus4, this part of the chord stays the same. And he also plays the song on a 12 string acoustic, which is pretty cool. Just keep that pinky in mind because the next chord is an F major. Um, and you play that chord for just two beats. And there's that sequence. We're gonna hop between a few chords just so you can hear what happens next. But to play F major, what you wanna do is move your index finger to the first fret of the B string, middle finger to the second fret of the G string, third finger, ring finger, to the third fret of the D string. And I'm strumming it by just playing root down up. So now we have. And then we're gonna jump down to a C major and these two fingers stay the same, you know, the pinky and the index finger, but you're gonna move your middle finger down a string to the second fret of the D string, move your ring finger down a string to the third fret of the A string. And then you land on our G major again. So this is what we have so far slowly. And just a note, when you're moving from that F to that C, or I should say really this is an F add nine if you wanna get technical about it, you'll notice that there is one strum um, where these fingers are off of the fretboard just cause I'm in the middle of moving from that F add nine to C. So it's totally okay to you know have some of the open strings ringing out there. Um, as opposed to hopping right from one to the next. You could try it both ways. And again, to be authentic, you could, you know, just follow what feels right in the moment and just try to imagine your John Lennon playing in the studio, probably not thinking too hard about you know, the technical aspects of what he's doing. Um, and to add to that, even though we're keeping that pinky on the third fret of the high E string the whole time as a pivot point, you know, physically, you don't actually hear that note ring out equally in every single chord you play. For example, moving from F add nine to C there, I almost didn't really even str uh, strum that note at all. And that's another thing to play around with to add some authenticity. It doesn't make it wrong to include it. It doesn't make it wrong to not include it. I just wanted to point that out because that's something you can notice if you listen really closely to the playing in the original track. So again, this is what we have so far. Now we move to a C major chord. And you might notice there's a little hammer on here with that middle finger. Uh, taking it off of the D string and then hammering it back on to that second fret. And then again we play a movement from F add nine to C. Now we have. Now it repeats. And you might notice I ended the sequence with a D major chord, but a regular D major, not this D sus4 from, from before regular D major, just like this. And you'll notice I'm doing another hammer on here. Hammering on with that index finger to the second fret of the G string. And that's the first half of the verse. Now this whole thing repeats again, but I will play what the complete ending of the verse sounds like. And then I will of course show you how to play it.
so there's this walk down. So first thing you want to do, play a D major chord. And of course you could just play down, down, up, down, but I think this would be a great moment to add that extra strum. Down, down, up, down, up. And then if you watch John Lennon playing this in Help, the movie, you'll notice he reaches over with his pinky and he puts it on the third fret of the A string. Uh, so it becomes a D over C chord, D with C in the bass, right? And what's really tricky about this chord is getting everything to ring out clearly, which is of course possible like this if you really stretch. But honestly, when I'm playing this song, I sometimes purposefully let myself mute certain notes. Because you hear when John Lennon plays this song, not everything rings out perfectly. So you could argue that this would be a good time to do that to make it more authentic. And after you play that chord, you remove your pinky and you move this index finger down to the second fret of the A string. So it becomes a D over A chord. And then take your index finger off, move it back to where it would normally be in a D major chord at the second fret of the G string. But we're gonna leave the A string open as our root note. So this becomes a D over A chord. And the strumming pattern for this last chord, you can hear it's down, down, down. So we have down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, down. And then we're in the chorus. In reality, there are two clearly distinct parts happening here. Firstly, the chords, which is the one that we will focus on. However, there is also another part that follows the vocal melody. And I'll show you a way to combine these two parts as well. Though just a note for you, if you wanted to isolate the part that follows the vocal melody, I think you have to tune to drop D, because you can hear that it ends on low D, um, which you can only achieve if you tune all the way down to D. But of course, that's not what we're doing. So I will tune back up to standard. So, the chords. This is a, sorry, this is a chord you already know. Don't touch your mic if you have one next to you. So, G major. Play down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. And here, you can definitely hear the more complex strumming pattern coming through more clearly than it did in the verse. Then you move to C major. Again, we already know these chords. The only difference would be the strumming pattern. You can hear that I'm ending it a little differently. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, down. And you can really lean into those final down strums. You know, it's kind of fun to play it that way. And then, we have this really fun chord movement. Starting on a D sus4, so what you want to do is start with your regular D major chord shape, but add your pinky to the third fret of the high E string. Take it off, and then take your middle finger off to play D sus2, and then back to regular D major. Now the last detail you can add is actually in the strumming pattern, which should really sound like this. Just on that last D major chord, you can hear it's a little different. So we have same as normal. Down, up, down. Now actually, before we move on from the chords, an interesting point of contention about the strumming pattern of that last D major chord. Listening through my phone speakers, I definitely hear it. But a lot of people claim to hear a consistent strumming pattern throughout that whole, that whole part where it doesn't change for that last D major chord and you strum it the same way you do every other chord. 
so that's an interesting note. Maybe take a listen to the song and see if you hear that or if you hear this. In any case, the difference is pretty subtle uh, and both will probably sound great. So it's just up to you to choose which you prefer. Feel free to leave a comment down below of which you hear. I think it would be really interesting to pose this question to you, the viewer. So there are the chords. Now let's talk about adding the melody. Now again, this isn't an official part. I'm just saying if you wanted to play the parts together, just because when I play the song, I think it's kind of fun to do it that way. Um, and yeah, this is what it could sound like. And you would end it the same way on that D major sequence. But what we have here is, so you play that G major chord normally. You play a third fret low E string, open A string, second fret. And you play open D, land on that C major chord, really emphasizing that third fret of the A string, not only because it's the root of the chord, but also that's where the melody goes. Then you play third fret low E string to the open E. And if you wanted to add a bit of twang, you could pull down on that third fret of the low E string slightly. And then that whole D sequence. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this lesson as much as I enjoyed showing you how to play this Beatles classic. Now, if you have a 12 string, of course, I would recommend bringing it out to play the song because it would be even more authentic. Uh, but of course, as you heard in this lesson, a regular six string acoustic will also sound great. Um, and just a note, if you want to try to play along to the actual track, you may have to detune your guitar slightly because the track is definitely a little bit flatter than standard tuning. Conversely, you could also tune the track up so that it's, you know, closer to standard tuning on the guitar. Again, if you want to slow down the song or loop certain parts, you can do that on the Guitario platform. It's a really great learning tool. So, until the next video, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you soon.